Hello there. Good afternoon. I mean, I'd say there's a fair few uh, thousand people here. It is the weather is lovely and it has a very jovial atmosphere, really. But for the activists here, there's a very, very serious message because, of course, they're here to campaign against reliance, they say, on fossil fuels in the UK. And I'm joined by former uh, British Olympian uh, Laura Baldwin. Thank you so much for joining me. Just tell me, how did you get from uh, Laura was a professional sailor and now you're a, an activist with Extinction Rebellion? How does that happen? Well, I learned about the climate crisis at the beginning of January 2019. Like my bubble of contempt literally burst in the moment that I read papers to my Canadian sailing friend who was attending the World Economic Forum. I flew over to, to Zurich for a weekend, you know, the sort of thing you do when you have no carbon conscience, because she was attending that forum. And I read these papers to her and it was like reading a script for a horror movie. And from that moment, I looked at all the problems and also the solutions, learning as much as I possibly could. Made all the eco swaps myself, um, looked to help my community, so planting trees, making uh, community food gardens. But I, the more I learned, the more I realized that it has to be government that acts on this, and I could see that they weren't. So I went along to a introductory talk for, head, for Extinction Rebellion and was sold into the movement. It just made sense what they were asking for. Okay, so you feel very much sort of sold on it. What is happening this week in regards to Extinction Rebellion? I understand they're trying to get more people involved. Yeah, so this week has been a massive week and I couldn't feel more confident stood here talking to you today because our demands of this rebellion are exactly the same as those demands of the United Nations and the International Energy Agency, and that is for no new fossil fuel investments, no new fossil fuel subsidies, and no new fossil fuel licenses. It just makes sense. We have this narrow window of opportunity to secure a livable future, and those are the words from the United Nations themselves to say that unless we act now, we face an unlivable world. So it's extremely important. And then you have um, the very famous uh, climate scientist, the NASA scientist, Peter Kalmus, who says, we need a billion climate activists. And the United Nations Secretary General saying, we need a grassroots movement that cannot be ignored. There is such power in protest. I think a lot of people would understand this power in protest, but a lot of people may be frustrated that there's going to be a lot of disruption in London today. I know you're going to be moving through the centre of London. We've seen with Extinction Rebellion, with Insane Britain, a lot of disruption that's hurt ordinary people. Why should those people get caught up in today's protests? So disruption is a really unfortunate side effect of direct action. There are hundreds of protests happening every day outside Parliament, but we never hear about them. The, the methods being used here, non-violent civil resistance, needs disruption to get the, to gain attention, to get the important messages across. So, uh, sincere apologies to anybody who is directly affected in this. But if you're worried about the climate crisis and you don't know what to do about it, come down and join us here today. The vibe is so uplifting and it really gives you hope to feel that people coming together could actually have a chance to force the changes that are necessary to to take effect. Well, look, Laura Baldwin, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be following this protest as it's going to be moving through the centre of London. But as I was saying there, I do warn there will be quite a lot of disruption for people in and around the area.